Hey there people, it's your favorite, Weedle Pin Missile, bringing you all another Scarlet and Violet VGC video featuring this really fun to Dunsparce team. But before we get into the battles, if you all enjoy the narrated Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle content and want to support the channel, what I do here on YouTube, please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, watch until the end of the video, just letting the video play out really does help out my channel, and maybe share the video with a friend who might enjoy it as well, help the channel grow, I very much appreciate it. And I do have a question of the day for you all. What are your goals for 2023 or like any New Year's resolutions you have set for yourself? Uh, let me know in the comments. My goals for 2023 are pretty basic. Like I want to upload more consistently. And another goal I have set for myself is to socialize more, both online and offline. Like I've been pretty antisocial the past year and uh, I definitely have to fix that. Speaking of which, I do have a Discord server. If you want to join that place to hang out, talk about Pokemon, just have a good time. It is free to join. I'll link to my Discord will be in the description. And big shoutouts to those so who left a super thanks on my recent content. It's of course entirely optional, like just watching my content really means the world to me, but the extra financial support is much appreciated because I am trying to get a new PC. I, I had my editing software crash like 10 times and then I just like lose all my motivation. Like it's frustrating sometimes. So I definitely do need to get around to upgrading my PC if you want to help me out. So I found the shiny to Dunsparce in Area Zero, and then I'm like, oh my god, it's so pretty, and then I had to make a team around it. I did use a strategy very similar to this in a very old showdown video where I used like magic powder to make Dunsparce into a psychic type so I can do the pen missile rattled sword power stuff. But now with terrestrialization, you don't have to do all that extra stuff. You can just terrestrialize and then boom, do your combo. Terrestrialization is really fun like that. So we have this Dunsparce combo with Jolteon, support of Jolteon. And then we have Annihilate and Ndidi because we do need some broken Pokemon to make this team semi-viable. And then we have Mudsdale and Rapska for the last members on my team. My first opponent today is packing a strategy I've been requested to use quite a bit on the channel, which is like side anger point activation with like with guaranteed crit moves like now screw out a flower trick or frost breath from frost Lash. So that's my opponent's strategy. The real question is who has the better strategy, me or the opponent? And I'm taking a selfie with my Dedunspires and they're not taking a selfie with their Toro, so that speaks for itself. They're gonna lead off with their Tauros and Frost Lash going for their gimmick turn one, as am I leading off with Jolteon and Dedunspires. And I'm just gonna terrestrialize turn one because I figure this is the Dedunspires video, I gotta like feature the strategy immediately. So we're going to terrestrialize. There's no redirection to stop our pin missile. There's no fake out or anything like that or like prankster tail ones. We can just go for the pin missile turn one, hitting our Dead Unspires, giving us a speed increase with rattle. But more importantly, we're going to activate our weakness policy and we're going to get a bunch of more speed boosts. We're just going to speed through the speed boosts because there's no need to sit through this at regular speed. This game's already slow enough as it is. So we're going to get plus five speed because of the loaded dice pin missile guaranteeing you hit yourself at least four times. Really fun. And we're going to go for the stored power stab with plus two special attack, attack plus five speed. That is super duper strong. We're able to one shot the Tauros, even if they were like assault bust, it doesn't matter. And now the Frost Lass is going to go for Icy Wind as close to Frost Breath, and they're going to reduce our speed, but it's okay because we just got plus five speed. So one speed drop isn't too big of a deal. And now they're going to bring in their Meow Scarada. And Meow Scarada does not have a Tauros alive to Flower Trick anymore, so I'm going to protect my uh, Dead on Sparse here, expecting a Sucker Punch potentially, and just also expecting a potential Sash on Meow Scarada as well. So they're going to go for the Flower Trick, and they actually outspeed us because of the Icy Wind Speed Drop on Jolteon. And they're going to change into a Pure Grass type, so now they're no longer quad weak to my Pin Missile. So I'm like, no, my Jolteon isn't going to get the kill because you actually can one shot Meow Scarada if they are quad weak to Pin Missile. <laughs> it's the one thing Jolteon can do with Pin Missile besides self procking is actually kill Meow Scarada if you get five hits. But we only get four hits on Pure Grass type, so we don't actually get the one shot. But it's okay. Hyper Drill is going to hit through a potential protect. We actually Hyper Drill on the Sidon Sparse as well because I wanted to run a signature move, but I also wanted to run Stored Power with Boomer, so we're like semi mixed. But I mean, we don't have many attack EVs, but. Like the damage is pretty equivalent even without any attack EVs. I don't remember my exact EV spread. I have it in Showdown. <laughs> I have it in Showdown, but I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Anyway, they're gonna bring in Vaporeon and they're gonna run away because they know that like my gimmick destroyed there. So we're able to defeat our opponent and oh my god, the laggy screens. This game needs help. Like how is a fade out transition lagging like that? Like how did they even manage that? My next opponent is packing a rain team with Pelipper, Golduck, and they also have Scizor. They're gonna lead off with their Pelipper and Golduck. Not too surprising because they are using a rain team and rain players have the same two brain cells. So they're gonna set up the rain and this time around I go with my Ndidi and Rapska lead because I know that Jolteon will get outsped by the Swift Swim 
and I will get handled if I try to go for the pin missile combo turn one. So instead, I go for my trick room mode, go for the follow me with our DD. A lot of people will be scared, including this gold lock, because they just miss DD with hydro pump. And now they're gonna go for the hurricane as well, bring me down to half HP. And I'm pretty sure I would have lived the hydro pump and then been able to redirect the hurricane as well instead of the trick room. But you know what? It's a rain team. They deserve it for using rain. Okay. Anyway, I go for follow me again. I go for the struggle bug here as well, just just because I want to reduce the damage from the Pelipper and the Gold Duck. And because they're both special attackers, you're gonna get a bunch of mileage here out of struggle bug. Now they go for the hurricane, which won't knock out my Ndidi after the struggle bug. And here they're going to miss another, another one, one. another hydro pump. So sucks for the opponent, and actually sucks for me because now they're able to go for protect. They actually go for a double protect as well, so they're not actually specs on the Gold Duck or the Pelipper, which kind of surprised me. I just go for Struggle Bug again because obviously I want to, you know, lower the special attack of both of them. But I'm like, okay, if I'm just not going to get knocked out, I'll do the job myself. So I go for the Healing Wish with my Ndidi because I don't want my opponent to forget about Healing Wish's power. So we're going to remove Ndidi off the field, and now I'm going to bring in my Dead on Sparse. We're actually going to store the Healing Wish for later because I basically Healing Wish to pivot out the Ndidi and bring in uh, the Dun Sparse for free. And now we're going to terrestrialize our Dun Sparse as well because even though I don't have Pinned Missile Jolteon, it doesn't mean I can't activate the Weakness Policy because I do carry the Pounce on my Rapska as well, which will lower our speed, neutralizing the speed boost from Rattled. But more importantly, we're going to activate our Weakness Policy, giving us a way to use Weakness Policy to Dun Sparse with Rattle under Trick Room, and now we can go for the Boom Burst, and it will get a double knockout versus this double duck. So down goes Pelipper and Gold Duck, they were handled by the Dunsparce, and yeah, down those bitches go. And now my opponent's gonna bring out their own Ndidi, and then they're gonna reveal their last, which will be the Armor Rouge. So in comes the Armor Rouge Ndidi, and they're actually gonna go for the Wide Guard here, which kind of surprised me. Though I guess if Pelipper didn't have Wide Guard, I guess Armor Rouge would have it. I go for a Revival Blessing here with my Rapska because it is the signature move. Well, I mean, it's one of the two Pokemon to get Revival Blessing. I'm gonna eat my Lepa Berry so I can actually go for another Revival Blessing potentially. And now we're going to revive our Ndidi Wishes to Sealing Wishes Power. So now we're gonna revive Ndidi. And we're gonna go for the Hyper Drill here. I didn't even mean to read the Wide Guard there. I just went for Hyper Drill because I figured to do more single target damage into the Arm Rouge, maybe one-shotting it. But unfortunately, we don't one-shot it. And now Ndidi hits us with a Life Orb Hyper Voice and does do a lot of damage. So now, um, the Turkum's gonna wear off, Psychic Train's gonna wear off, Rain's gonna wear off, everything's gonna wear off. So I'm like, okay, let me switch out here, bring back in my Ndidi, because I do want to protect my Dead on Sparse from some attacks because the Turkum just wore off. I will get outsped. So yeah, I also don't want to lose my Rapska to like an armor cannon, so my opponent's going to terrestrialize their DD here to a fairy type. I just go for protect again, because I don't want to die to like an armor cannon. But they decide to go for another wide guard, even though I just went for the uh, the hyper drill, so maybe they predicted me to predict them, and then they went for it again. I don't know, but here they're going to go for the terrestrialized fairy dazzling gleam with their DD. I don't really know why they run this. I mean, maybe, I, I understand for it. I understand why they um, are Terrestrialized Fairy for like defensively, but they're an offensive in DD, so it's kind of weird that they are Terrestrialized Fairy, because it does do less damage than Terrestrialized Hyper Voice, or just regular Hyper Voice would, right? Because Hyper Voice has 90 base power spread. As you can see, Dazzling Gleam, even though it becomes Sap, it doesn't finish off the Dunce Bar, so if they just clicked Hyper Voice there, I think we would have been knocked out. But unfortunately for the opponent, they underestimated my Dunce Bar, and Hyper Drill will finish off the Ndidi, and yeah, down goes the Ndidi. Now they only have one Pokemon left, which is his Armor Rouge. And yeah, they're kind of screwed at this point. As now I'm able to bring in my Rapska once again. I can go for another Revival Blessing if I really want to. But at this point, I could just go for another Hyper Drill. But yeah, my opponent's just going to forfeit here because they know they were beaten. So hopefully you all enjoyed that second battle featuring the secondary way you can enable the Dunsparce with Pounce Rapska. But yeah, let's move on to the next battle. My next opponent is packing another rain team with Pelipper Palafin, Ferrigirath, King Gambit, Amoongus, and Annihilate. So it looks like a more of a bulky, like, trick room based rain team, which is kind of cool to see. They're going to decide to lead off with Palafin and King Gambit, as I decide to lead off with Annihilate and Jolteon this time around, because I wanted to showcase the Annihilate mode on this team. So Annihilate is one of the most broken Pokemon in VGC and singles at the moment, just because Rage Fist is so insane and because Annihilate's base stats are just so crazy. 
They're gonna Terrestrialize the King Gambit turn one, Link for Sucker Punch to weaken me in case I am Final Gambit Annihilate. I go for the side pen missile though into my Annihilate, and each individual hit is gonna stack up Rage Fist up to a 300 base power because we were hit five times because of the Sucker Punch. And I ride their Terrestrialization with my Annihilate, and I go for the Rage Fist one shotting their King Gambit. And if they didn't Terrestrialize there, at the very least, I mean, they would have like clicked Protect or something, and then they switched out into Amoongus. So worst case scenario, I would have amped up my Rage Fist as they brought in Amoongus, and then I would have just Rage Fisted the Amoongus. So now they're going to bring in their Palaf in here, and I don't want to get knocked out by a Jet Punch, so I decided to Hard Switch into my Ndidi. I could have switched Jolteon out into Ndidi instead, but I didn't want to uh, get Wave Crash as I like, you know, get spored. I, I just wanted to play it safe. So I bring in my Ndidi instead. They go for the Rage Powder as opposed to going for Spore. So I could have definitely just uh, switched out Jolteon into the Ndidi and then went for the Rage Fist. But I wanted to block the Jet Punch and Spore with Safety out this Ndidi. And I'll just go for the Thunderbolt here trying to knock out the Palafin. But you know, Rage Powder gets rid of that Thunderbolt. And now I'm going to switch out of my Jolteon and I'm going to bring in my Dedone Spores. Even though I can't Pen Missile it at the moment, I still wanted to bring it in because I don't want to let my Jolteon go to sleep. And now they're going to switch out of the Palafin as well, because I'm assuming they're Choice Banded the way they're playing it. And now they're going to bring in their Palafin here to set up the Rain. So now the Palafin has Rain, which is kind of scary. Rain for that Jet Punch and Wave Crash on that super scary Palafin. They just go for Rage Powder once again. And I'm like, okay, I'll just Psychic like into you. I don't really care about Spore because I am Safety Goggles on my Ndidi. It's just kind of funny. To, the opponent just won't stop clicking Rage Powder, and I'm like, okay, I'm not complaining. And instead of going for, like, you know, Hydro Pump, like the last opponent, they just have Surf. They, they, they were done missing Hydro Pump, but they just knocked out their own Amoongus here with the Surf Palipper. And I just go for Healing Wish with my Ndidi, because I am Healing Wish with a Revival Blessing on my team. I was experimenting with this in VGC. I don't think it's very good, but I thought it was fun to mess around with. And here I'm going to go for the Boom Burst here. Not knocking out the Palipir because I'm at neutral special attack. We would do a good chunk of damage. Now, I'm able to bring in my Jolteon here as they're going to bring out their Palafin. And because uh, we have Psychic Terrain up, they can't Jet Punch us. And now we're going to Trash Slice Psychic Artisan Spires, going for the Side Pin Missile once again. And now, yeah, we're just going to get our Weakness Policy. And we can just go for the Boom Burst once again. And we're going to obliterate everybody after all these Rattled Speed Boosts, which we're going to speed through again. We're going to go for the Boom Burst. With plus two special attack and it stays stab because even though you terrestrialize new with psychic type, you do keep stab on your original typing. So, uh, stab boom burst is gonna knock out the Palafin, but Palafin's able to lift his Palafin's a bulky Pokemon, and Wave Crash will finish off my Jolteon. They had enough of that Jolteon, and they're gonna knock me out, but um, now they're going to forget about Healing Wish's powers. I'm gonna bring in Annihilate here. And you never want to forget about healing with his powers. We're going to get full health We're back in our Annihilate. And our Annihilate does carry Final Gambit as well. Uh, my Annihilate set is kind of weird. I'll explain more about it in our later battles, but we're going to go for the uh, final Gambit here, and I just go for the Hyper Drill, and they are going to run away. Because once Healing Wish heals up Annihilate back to full, you, you gotta run, you gotta scoot. So hopefully you all enjoyed that battle featuring Rain getting owned again. That King Gambit read with the Terrestrialization turn 1 was kinda sexy, I won't lie. My next opponent is packing like a pseudo Paris trap team with like Gothitelle, Azumarill, the Amoongus, and then they also have like Grimmsnarl, Annihilate for like setup. They're gonna decide to lead off with Grimmsnarl and Annihilate, but I just go with my Annihilate and Jolteon. Now my Annihilate is actually one point slower than Jolteon with the Choice Scarf, so it's actually holding Choice Scarf. It has a lot of HP, attack, and speed EVs. Its EVs are spread around like that. They go for Light Screen here as I go for the Side Pin Missile into my Annihilate once again to boost up that Rage Fist damage. So we're going to hit ourselves a guaranteed four times thanks to Loaded Dice. They go for Light Screen because they were so afraid of, you know, Spec Shadow Ball Jolteon, but little did they know. I was, you know, just going to Rage Fist them and they waste their Terrestrialized Fire turn one. One shutting a Terrestrialized Pokemon once again with the Rage Fist. Down that Annihilate goes. And now they're gonna just bring in. I forget who they bring in. Um, sorry. This, yeah, this battle's kind of vague. And they bring in a Zoomerill here, and they kind of know that they were handled. I could just go for the Rage Fist again into the Zoomerill, and I could just Charm Grimmsnarl. If they go for Spirit Break, they'll give me Defiant, and I'll live, and they just forfeit, because they know, like, okay. Okay, my Annihilate is dead, and theirs is alive, so I have lost the OP Pokemon War. So hopefully, you all enjoyed that shorter battle. I just wanted to showcase the Annihilate difference. I thought it was a funny, like, really fast battle to showcase.
My next opponent is packing a Tailwind Hyper Offense team with Murkrow Godangleho, Amoongus, Garchomp, Hydreigon, and then another Palafin. So that's the team matchup for this battle. They're going to decide to lead off with their double shiny pseudo legendary dragons as I'm going to lead off with my Jolteon and Annihilate once again because I wanted to showcase a secondary combo you can do with this Annihilate Jolteon lead. So I go for the side pen missile into Annihilate to boost up Rage Fist, of course, of course, but notice how little damage we do to our Annihilate. So what we're able to do is we're able to outspeed Annihilate by one point and go for the final gambit stacking up Rage Fist and trading one for one. So we actually combined like the Annihilate sets into one with this strategy. So we're able to one shot the Garchomp. We could have went for the Rage Fist as well, but we're able to go for a Vile Blessing later on. Watch and we eat. actually tanked this Draco Meteor. Jolteon ate, ate that shit up. Like let Life Orb, Draco Meteor, we ate that with ease. And now they're gonna bring in their ugly Goldanguho, another le legit shiny. My opponent is an amazing shiny hunter. I'm gonna bring in my beautiful shiny Rapska here which is legit shiny unlike their shinies. Okay, listen, I, I know that VDC tryhard did not hunt those. Okay, listen, you do not shiny hunt Garchomp, okay? Like, nobody shiny hunts Garchomp. We, we, we can all agree they're hacked, right? Like, there's no arguing. Anyway, I go for Thunderbolt into their shiny Murkrow, reading them switching out their minus two Hydreigon. We get a crit as well, just because that's how hard we read their ass. Knocking out the Murkrow with the Thunderbolts, and now they go for Shadow Ball, but because the Trash lies dark on my rap skill, we'll be able to tank that really well because we now resist it. And now I can go for the Revival Blessing with my Rapska, reviving my Annihilate. So now my Annihilate can go for the Rage Fist because your Rage Fist stacks persist even after you faint until the battle ends, like you keep your Rage Fist stacks. So now Annihilate has Rage Fist stacks up and can sweep late game with those Rage Fist once it comes back out. And now they're going to bring back out the Hydreigon and um my jolteon outspeeds the hydreigon they're gonna trastalize fire here and i just go for the eerie impulse to reduce that special attack once again on the hydreigon no draco media required and now they're gonna go for the trastalize fire heat wave which will finish off my jolteon but it's okay because i mean jolteon did a lot of work this battle they're gonna burn me with the heat wave i'm like rude how dare you and now they're gonna you know knock out jolteon but it's okay because we should be able to live the goldengo attack and judging by the fact they went for Shadow Ball once again, I'm going to assume that they are specs and locked into Shadow Ball. So um, we're able to live and now we can go for the secondary Revival Blessing because of the love of we had earlier. We can go for another Revival Blessing and we're going to see a funny interaction. Um, we're actually forced to bring back out Jolteon because it died on the same turn that we revived it. So we're forced to bring back out Jolteon, which is kind of a weird interaction. I didn't think that would happen, but um, we're going to bring back out Jolteon. And now I'm going to switch up my Rapska because I wanted to save it for later. And I'm going to bring into Dunsparce because I'm also expecting the opponent to um, go for Shadow Ball again because they're locked into it. So I go for the Pen Missile into the Dunsparce, even though I'm not Psychic type at the moment, I still want to get those speed boosts with the side Pen Missile. So we're going to go for the Pen Missile, get a bunch of speed boosts, with rattles, which is so funny that th that I'm going for this even without the weakness policy. I saw the opportunity to do it and I'm like, okay, I can't let it go to waste like this. So I go for the pen missile, get four hits guaranteed because of loaded dice. And now they're gonna go for the trash slice fire heat wave. They're gonna miss the Jolteon, which sucks for them, but like they're at minus two. So I would have definitely lived and we're able to pivot into shadow ball as well with my Dun Dun Sparse. Actually, never mind. they target Jolteon. I lied. Why? I lied. I lied. Okay, me? so I brought in the Dun Sparse thinking they might Shadow Ball again, but they just go for the Jolteon slot and knock me out a second time. But now I'm just going to bring in my Scarf Annihilate because I can just go for the super stacked Rage Fist and the Boom Burst here, and what can they really do about that? So I'm going to go for the Boom Burst here, and uh, yeah, Monitigo is going to be immune, and we don't do too much damage because we don't have weakness policy, but we're going to go for the Rage Fist here into the Goldango Ho, one-shotting their ass, annoying-ass ghost Pokemon, getting beat by another annoying-ass ghost Pokemon. We love to see it. And now they're going to go for another Trastalized Fire Heat Wave here, and they get, like, incredibly lucky with Heat Wave. The luckiest Heat Wave player I've seen in my life. I nearly just missed Jolteon, but they get a crit on Annihilate, knocking me out, and they burn my Dunspar, so they got two burns, a crit. And I'm like, I've never seen Heat Wave like actually get this much mileage. Like, they're making Heat Wave look like a good move, which is crazy to me. But I'm gonna bring back out my Rapska here, and it's a 2v1. And maybe they think they can like beat me because they don't forfeit here. But yeah, I just go for the uh, Struggle Bug here, and I go for Hyper Drill. 
Yeah, let's go for Hyper Drill here to finish off the Hydreigon because I am faster thanks to those Rattle Speed Boosts. Maybe they like forgot about that because they don't forfeit. I go for the Hyper Drill here and we're able to knock out the Hydreigon, but the opponent like mental booms and they rage no, quit. So leave. like I literally knocked out the last Pokemon and they turned off their game. Like, come on, honey. It's just a Pokemon battle. Scarlet and Violet VGC has a lot of people rage quitting, like a lot more people than Sword and Shield did. Like I don't know what it is, but hopefully you all enjoyed that salty rage quit. Um, Annihilate, I gotta showcase the Annihilate Revival Blessing combo, so I can't complain. Hopefully you all enjoyed that battle. Let's move on to the last battle. My final opponent for today's video is packing another Tailwind team with Murkrow, Garchomp, Kilowattrol, Jumpluff, King Gambit, and Sylveon. So, I noticed the Jump Puff Kilo Watcher on the team preview, and I also built a team, or I'm in the process of making a team around Jump Puff Kilo Watcher as well. So I was curious to see what the opponent was running on their Jump Puff, so I'm really hoping they bring it in this battle. So they're going to decide to lead off with their Murkrow and Kilo Watcher, so it definitely looks like they're going for some Tailwind Wind Power stuff, which is cool to see. I just lead off with Jolteon and Mudsdale because I saw the opportunity to actually use Mudsdale in this video, so I had to go for it. So they go for the Tailwind, activating Wind Power, so now their electric damage is doubled with their Kilowattro, but they just go for Volt Switch. Um, I am Volt Absorb, so we're just immune to that. <laughs> so maybe they thought I was Quick Feet Jolteon because it's a Weedle to an Eedle team, so I had to be Quick Feet Jolteon, right? No, there, there's no reason to run Quick Feet Jolteon if you aren't Flame Orb, right? Like, since I am Loaded Dice, I figure I might as well just stick with Volt Absorb. Though you can go with either or, honestly. I just go for the side pin missile here, activating stamina a bunch. Uh, I just think of the melee stamina <laughs> voice clip I have. Maybe I'll make a team around uh, this strategy again, just for a quick short on video, just so I can use the <laughs> that sound bite because I, I know it'll make those. I know it'll please those showdown on fanboys. It's true. Now they're gonna switch out with Kilo Watcher here because I'm assuming they're locking the Volt Switch at the moment. So they're gonna switch out and they're gonna bring in their Jump Pluff. So I'm like, yay, they brought Jump Pluff. And then they go for Haze. I'm like, oh, they're evil. So they get rid of all of my stamina boosts, but I ride their ass on Tuesday. I go for a secondary pen missile into my mod still just to play around the potential haze and what do you know Mercury goes for haze and we're going to speed through this we're going to get another million petrillion stamina boost with the pen missile so get plus five we hit another five times and we're going to go for the body press here finishing off the Mercury. so no more prankster tailwind or prankster haze to worry about with this meme team so that's great Mercury is just a bane Murkrow is just a pain to deal with sometimes. I know it's a not fully evolved Pokemon, but that's just how broken Prankster Talent is. They're going to bring back up the Killer Watch Roll here, and I don't want to let my Jolteon get put to sleep by Sleep Powder, and I do have Safety Goggles on my Ndidi. So I'm going to bring in my Ndidi here, set up the Psychic Terrain, which will block any priority moves they might have, and I'm going to go for Protect my Mudsdale because I am Leftovers, and I want to scout out and see if they do carry the Sleep Powder on the Jump Luff. They go for the Air Slash here with Killer Watch Roll, so they lock themselves into the Air Slash. And they're going to go for the Sleep Powder, but they actually target into my Ndidi slot, so they do find out I am Safety Goggles. And this scares them to death because they don't click Sleep Powder ever again in this battle. So that's the power of Safety Goggles, and I respect them so much for not clicking Sleep Powder after this because I do not like fighting Sleep Powder. At least with the Moongus, like Spore, you know it's coming and it's like slow so you can like taunt it. But with like Chlorophyll Sleep Powder users, they just like outspeed Blitz you and it's like so annoying to deal with. So. We're going to redirect away the Air Slash and the Leech Seed. So they are like a Leech Seed uh, Jump Off set. My Jump Off set was much different combined with Kilo Watcher, but when I make the Wind Power team, you'll, you'll see what I mean. But we're going to go for the Terra Fighting Body Press. I did just trash Live Fighting in front of two Flying Types. Thanks for asking. I just did it because I wanted to see the damage from plus six or plus five Terra Fighting Body Press, and I was kind of disappointed. I just expected it to one shot through a resist, but I'm definitely overestimating my zero defense investment but still. That's for sure. So now they're going to bring in their uh, Sylveon and go for the Air Slash. And it doesn't do too much damage because uh, I was I was, I was was thinking this was Specs Kilo Watch Roll, but it's actually not Specs Kilo Watch Roll, which you'll see. Um, and by the Air Slash damage, you can tell it's not Specs Kilo Watch Roll. So the way they were playing it, I figured they were Specs. But um, as you can see here, Terrifying plus five or plus six now because of the uh, Air Slash hit Body Press brings them down to its Focus Sash. So it actually is Sash on the Kilo Watch Roll. So. Yeah, I thought they were specs, but they aren't, so I, I, you know, whatever. 
But because they aren't specs on the kilowatt roll, you'll never guess what move they're gonna click. That's right, they're going to click protect. So they're gonna go for protect with the kilowatt roll, and I'm like, ugh. That's so annoying because I go for protect as well with my mudsdale because I don't want to die to a hyper voice, right? So I was thinking I was going to outspeed with my Ndidi, but unfortunately, I, I think Taylor might still be up. And so uh, the, the Sylveon's going to outspeed me and hyper voice will knock out the Ndidi. So that one goes my Ndidi. I was trying to just finish off the Kilowattro with a Psychic, but unfortunately they knocked me out. And I'm going to bring in my Jolteon here. And Tailwind has expired, I'm pretty sure. So... They go for Protect with Sylveon. Everyone has Protect on their team. I'm like, bitch, you're so annoying. I go for the Eerie Impulse into the uh, Sylveon, trying to reduce its damage a bit, but they do carry the Protect. They do, do make a good Protect here, and now they go for the Volt Switch here as opposed to going for Air Slash. I don't really know why, but they're going to Volt Switch out, saving their Keely Watch Roll for late game, and now they're going to bring out their last, which I forgot what their last is. Oh, it's Jump Puff, right? <laughs> they're going to bring out their Jump Puff once again, and I go for the body press into the protect. I'm like, oh, that protect is so annoying. Like, I hate when I double attack and do a protect. I do a lot to people. Like, I always protect and be annoying. But, like, when people do it to me, I'm like, how dare you beat me at my own game? Like, you're annoying. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I go for the area impulse into Sylveon again because I want to reduce his hyper voice damage. So I go for area impulse. And my opponent goes for Strength Sap into Mudsdale. I'm actually okay with that because it's not Sleep Powder. And I use my Physical Defense right now to do damage because I'm terrifying with Body Press. So I don't really care about Strength Sap. They go for the Hyper Voice, not doing too much damage thanks to the Eerie Impulse. And now I can go for the plus six terrifying Body Press here into the Sylveon doing over half HP. And we do see, and we actually don't see it because Mudsdale is very fat. It covers the Sylveon. It does carry the Citrus Berry, so... Um, <laughs> I mean, at the very least, you can see through Mudsdale, but Mudsdale is, does block the left slap, basically, because it's so big. I, I think that's kind of funny. I go for Thunderbolt here just to weaken the Jump Puff a bit. They go for Leech Sheet here with their Jump Puff. I'm like, okay, it's not Sleep Powder, which is nice. But and they're like, oh yeah, I have Yawn, by the way. So they go for Yawn. I'm like, oh, this, this person's so annoying. With Because I, I, you already know what they're going to click after this Yawn, right? Like, we all know it's going to be up protect. So th I go for the Body Press here, finishing off the Jump Puff, so... At the very least, they only have two Pokemon left, and we we know the Kila Watcher carries Protect, and we know Sylveon carries Protect, and we are, like, I know, like, like, listen, I, I just, like, I just know they're gonna click out Protect, but there's, there's no doubt in my mind, there's, like, no reason to make the play I'm about to make, but I, that's how confident I am that they're about to click out Protect right now. So they're gonna bring Kila Watcher, I'm gonna switch out my plus six mud still, just because that's how confident I was in my play. I'm going to bring in my Dedunce Burst here, expecting the Double Protect, and what do you know? The Kilo Watcho actually terrestrializes for some reason. They're going to terrestrialize their 1 HP Kilo Watcho, right? It could have been the ter Fairy Sylveon potentially, but no. They ter the ter <laughs> they terrestrialize their 1 HP Kilo Watcho just to click Protect. Like, what? <laughs> this is Master Belt, by the way. It it it's the sad truth. This is Master Belt. I go for Pin Missile into my Dead on Spice because I knew they were going to double protect. I didn't think they were going to terrestrialize. That was a bit of a shock to me, but I knew they were going to double protect. So I can go for the Pin Missile, giving myself some speed boost, so I'll be able to outspeak the watch roll after this annoying ass double protect. And they actually are Terra Electric, so that's the same Terra I'm also packing on my Kilo Watch Roll. So it's cool to see they're packing Terra Electric just because you want to stack up that electric damage. So Jolteon's going to go to sleep, but we just got the speed boost with the Dunsparce, so. I just go for the Boom Burst here, just trying to finish off the Kilowatt Roll and Sylveon. I know it's not going to do too much damage because we uh, we don't have any special attack boost, but that's a few times in this video we've used the Dunsparce even without that weakness policy. So the Dunsparce, even just choice specs with Boom Burst or Throat Spray probably has potential as well. But the Dunsparce does have a lot of potential in my opinion. Even past like this rattled gimmick strategy, I go for the Boom Burst, knocking out the Kilowatt Roll. We're, actually, we're also going to hit our Jolteon, but it's okay because we already Eerie Impulse the Sylveon, and like, I'm fine with it. Jolteon is gonna stay asleep though, and they're going to finish me off with the Hyper Voice. So down go, actually they don't finish me off, I lied. I am a liar, but yeah, I just go for Hyper Troll here to kill the Sylveon, and they forfeit, because they don't even want to let Dunsparce get the kill. So Duns the Dunsparce taunting them in my trainer card, that will be the end of the battle. Featuring this very funny to Dunsparce team. If you want to use this team yourself, here's the rental code. It's not the most competitive team. I wouldn't recommend trying to climb Master Ball with this team. Though I do think you could reach Master Ball 
with this team if you wanted to give it a try. The movesets will also be in the description if you want to see the exact EVs, you can look at that as well. That'll do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. I love you all very, very much, and I'll check you all in my next video.